this was a really fun episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. In all, we get our first look into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s new updated red and black outfit. Plus, we see Mania for the first time after the time skip. And we learn more about the character of Osaka while having a very entertaining Rush duel. Hello everyone and welcome to Dueling with Downton. And today, we're going to be talking all things episode 55 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush anime series. And trust me, there are some interesting things to talk about in regards to the characters of Asaka and Yu. And we'll also sprinkle a bit of Yuhi and Ranran Ran in there as well. Starting off with Yu. Now Yumu was acting rather out of character slash different from the Yumu that we've known so far. But for good reason. You see, the cast have been through a lot since the time skip, and even during that time skip. From being exiled out of Mutsuba town, from having Gutierrez relocate to the alien residency area and into a different building, having her brother change slash disconnect from her, losing friends like Yuna, plus having Yuji's leave for so long, would have all mentally affected Yuamu and led to this kind of difference in character. So I'll go through all these reasons and explain why each of them would have affected her so much. Firstly, the important one, Yuhi disconnecting. We've seen how much the twins care about each other, and thinking back on the first duel between Yujis and Suijo, the show really wants us to see the display of the bond that they both share, but more importantly, the connection they have as a family. And the show goes again to point out the connection between both Yuhi and Yuamu within this very episode once more. Yumu was struggling to see a road to victory during this duel, but upon seeing Yuhi and reconnecting with him, it allowed her to see the road more clearly. Together, the older twins are much stronger, so Yuhi being disconnected from UTS at the beginning of Season 2 makes it all the more believable as to why Yumu might be struggling so much. Plus, there might be a slight element of guilt involved with Yuhi's disconnect. Because Yumu, although she sees it and slightly understands it, she doesn't really know how to help Yuhi in the best possible way, even though she really does want to. The second point, relocating to the alien residency area. Lo relocating to any new location takes time for someone to adjust to their new living situation. As with bringing rebuilding something, like Yumu is rebuilding UTS. Learning new ways to support yourselves within that area, just adapting in general. It all takes time. But if you add in all the other mental struggles and elements weighing on you and Mu's character, it's going to be more difficult for her to adjust quickly. Also, she's lost her home, which is a place where she would feel more comfortable and the most safest within. She was in charge of being president of UTS and in charge of that building. And having that taken away from her could have caused her to feel sadness and guilt. Guilt about failing to keep that building, which could also explain as to why she's working so hard to keep UTS alive. Doing things like looking into the most mundane, very small and trivial request of all the aliens, while also juggling her school life. And the next one, loss. Losing someone you respect hurts, but losing a friend hurts even more. And unfortunately for Yumi, she's experienced these very recently. She saw Yuga get carded, and then quickly afterwards, Yuna followed. The show has done a great job in showing us the friendship building between Gohai Yuna and Yuumu's character in season one, and how close of a friendship they're getting. So again, you can say that they're friends, and this loss would weigh heavily on. You and Moose character as well. Now I want to preface that seeing this slight change within the character isn't a bad thing, as she's human and also very young. She's allowed to feel these mixture of emotions and feelings. Her overcoming it by the end of this episode, and regaining that dueling spirit and lively positive personality, was a joy to see. But I wouldn't say that all of this was character development for her, because she hasn't fully overcome these feelings just yet. They just kind of lessened, so to speak. They still need more attention, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the character moves moving forward. 
I also actually really enjoyed Yumu's character within this episode here because it's something different and allows us to see a new side of her character plus her winning combination within this duel was really cool and smart once again showing off her excellent dueling ability. Okay, so Asaka. Now pride definitely runs within the Mutsuba family as we see a lot of pride from Asaka shown within this episode. However, this pride is only the surface level of emotion displayed, as underneath that pride lies the feelings of guilt, loss, love, sadness, and regret. Asaka, reflecting back on those days she spent with Yuna and Yuga, creating and sharing rush tools, was looked back upon as being happy, blissful, and joyful in memory. But thanks to MIK, she now lost those who have made those times so special. No longer is Yuna around, and so too has gone Yuga. In both situations, her friends got carded, and Asaka couldn't slash didn't do anything to help. And this is where her regret and feelings of guilt appear. She's feeling guilty for not interfering or stopping Doha Yuna from dueling Manabu, and leading to that situation. This is why we see within the episode that she's resolved herself in pursuit of the school presidency, presidency position. This will allow her to use it as a stepping stone and then eventually reclaim Mutsuba town from the clutches of MIK. To her, that goal is her way of making up for her lack of action in saving and helping her friends. And making that step to get those blissful moment back once more. Now I did mention the feeling of love and with that emotion does bring admiration, respect and reserve. Asaka, like Yuna, was amazed by Yuga's efforts and displays of creativity which sparks the feelings of admiration. Asaka also respects both Yuga and Yuna which in turn brought forth a sense of reservation and keeping her own feelings about uh, towards Yuga hidden and compressed. Asaka could see how much Yuna liked Yuga, and if Asaka also acted upon her own feelings and desires, this could cause those happy moments with Yuga and Yuna to break slash rip apart. So she pushes down her feelings in exchange for more fun and enjoyable moments with her friends moving forward. Which is both sweet and sad at the same time when you think about it. Now, when all this focus being given to us from Asaka's character, I feel like this was a really smart way of doing it, and a much needed input from her character. Much needed focus, that would go. Now, when all this focus being given to us for Asaka's character, I thought the way they presented it was really smart, and it was some much needed focus for the character within the series. Because for me personally, I've actually started to think differently about Asaka's character thanks to this episode. Before, I saw her as just someone with a lot of money that was a rich bully who just gave money to anyone to force them to do whatever she wanted them to comply with. But now, when you strip away that money, you strip away that wealth, and you actually get deeper into Asaka's character, you find out that she is something more, and I really do appreciate that. But of course, with this, I do actually want to point out a few similarities between herself and Asana from Yu-Gi-Oh! Sabans. Now, of course, we had to do this. Both gain some form of feelings toward Yuga. Both have a strong sense of pride if runs in a Mutsuba family. Both her and Asana are known as presidents within their respective schools. Both have friends to allow them to lessen their pride a bit, but also make their pride stronger thanks to the support of those friends surrounding them. Now we don't need to obviously go into their appearance because that's quite obvious, but at the same time I do just want to point out a few of those. And finally the last two talking points of this video. Firstly, Ran Ran is alive as we see her confronting or being with Yuhi. And secondly, the more important thing to talk about is that someone has stolen his card from Manabu's MIK branch. 
And of course, we're led to kind of speculate as to who his card is. It could be Yuga. It can't be um, Yuna because she's a female. It could be the creator. It could be anyone. But I think it's led us to believe that it could be Yuga's card. Because Phaser went after Yuga personally. And for that, I feel like Phaser does see Yuga as a threat. Which is why he went full force against him and is now really wanting that card back. But the other question is, who stole the card? And I think that person is Ran Ran. Why? Well, she's a member of MIK, so she will have access to all of their systems and data entries. Plus, she's a master of disguise, being from the Nanahoshi family. So she could have easily impersonated somebody in order to gain access to where they store his card. And also, with seeing in the preview that she is with Yuki, it kind of raises the question if she's really with MIK slash Phaser. Because we know that Manabu obviously has his ulterior motives, but he seems loyal. Where it doesn't actually look like Ran Ran is specifically on the same level of loyalty to Phaser as Manabu is pretending to be. Another thing to also keep in mind though is the time frame of when the card got stolen. As this episode strangely wanted us to know how many days had passed while the events of the school uh, president selection C kind of polls were going on. Meaning that we have a time frame to possibly work around and with to investigate when the card was stolen, which might come into play more often. Because while we've got those one day passed, two days have passed, we might actually be able to get some flashbacks to see what happened during those time frames. So overall, I really like this episode. It gave us a lot more focus on the Saka and Jumu's character, also giving us a sprinkle of Yuhi development and showcasing that he is slowly but surely understanding his purpose, his role, and his road to victory. So, I'm really excited to see how they kind of play on that and move forward with that idea. Plus, we got everything else that I spoke about as well. I'm looking forward to the mystery, looking forward to how things unravel. This was a great episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know your thoughts. Sorry that it's late. But apart from that, have a great day. Adikator, matane, goodbye.